What are you doing? Go play Hellsinger! It's really, really good! So what are you waiting? Oh, and it also has a free demo, so go play it, then play the main game and join the roaring crowd of metalheads! Ah, it's astonishing how fun Hellsinger is! I haven't had this much fun in a long time! Now, sure, before that it was Elden Ring, before that Bullets Per Minute, and before that Doom Eternal. Now I have a lot to say, though, before we get into that, what even is Helsing? Now, in fact, Helsinger is a typical FPS shooter, and in the terms that my American friends might understand it, well, 8 levels, 6 weapons, bosses that are pretty much all the same except for the last one, yeah, that might not sound like a big thing. Objectively speaking, it's a small game, and there's nothing to say but that. Well, the uniqueness for Helsinger comes from the fact that it is a member of this newly formed subgenre for FPS games, called Rhythm FPS games, where you combine the beat system with ripping and tearing the demon flesh until it is done! Though, in concept, it might sound like a restrictive thing, shooting and punching and doing things on beat only. Well, Hellsinger has a slight difference to that, but yeah, you do better the more you're on beat. And that means you do specific things on time rather than when it's ready or when you can. But the thing is, FPS games and heavier music, especially metal and more, have gone hand in hand quite well in the last little while. And boy oh boy, does this game has spawned an angel of mayhem indeed. That feeling when you finally get on the rhythm and start dealing more damage as you're shooting on the beat and dispatch monsters faster, better, stronger, is not only fun, but when you're getting into the rhythm, actually feels amazing. You know that feeling when you put on your favorite music track and then turn on your favorite game and you get into the rhythm of the game and the beat comes up with your favorite part in the song and you start synchronizing. It feels really cool, right? And that's the thing. Hellsinger is that! The whole game! The game starts out with simple beats, but as you're doing better and better, the more of the music comes in with the multiplier going up and up, until the moment when the lyrics kick in and you realize it is amazing and you want to do better, as you're destroying the hellspawn with the glorious grace of a devil possessed. So, you're not only rewarded with better damage as you're keeping on the beat, but also with better music, and you just want to keep it on because the music genuinely is fantastic and it just keeps you pushing forward and killing faster Now though, before we get into it, I do have a duty to beat a dead horse, and that is specifically to go into negatives, of course. Though there aren't a lot of them, though that's kind of the thing with the whole game. There's not a lot of it generally. As I said previously, not a lot of weapons, not a lot of levels, and even the connection between them is rather disjointed. So yeah, it clearly is a budget offering for a game, if you will, but though you can feel where the actual effort has been put, and frankly speaking, it is highly respectable. Though for the price, some people expect far more, and well, that's fine, that is what you can expect from the game. However, for me, well, that's a different story, and I'll get into that. However, before we go into it, let's just talk about the cringe, shall we say. Now, 
I love metal. I love this, the culture overall. It's fantastic. It's very welcoming, very kind and fun. The thing is, metalheads are nerds. Basically, we're all nerds. We like to obsess about things or like things that shall we call them normies don't quite get in their normal way i suppose but regardless the point is with that also comes uh, the cringe in the game quite a bit it tries to be quite edgelordy blah 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 and even the protagonist's name is uh the demons not being the most creative types they just called her the unknown just because you excuse it doesn't still mean that it's Mm, but okay, fine, you know, fine. The game is really fun, so it doesn't particularly matter anyways. There aren't really big stupid things in the game, much like what you would expect from, you know, the heavy music scene, like the mosh pits. Genuinely fucking stupid things, but regardless. In all of the critiques for the game, because it basically has very little in it, genuinely there was only one really bad thing that I didn't like out the get-go, and that was pre-orders. The game had pre-orders, and that is literally, for me, the only ointment uh, fly, if you will, that exists. With a pre-order, you'd be able to play the game early, which... Why do it? Like, like, you had everything going for you. In the Steam reviews right now, you can see it overwhelmingly positive, and for a good reason, because it is genuinely fucking fun! But, with that one pre-order nonsense, you, you, you kind of ruined the completely flawless execution of an indie developed game. But speaking of that, that's pretty much all there is to say negative about the game. Yeah, there's not a lot of it, but even so, it's time to take a look at the positives. Ah, and of course, we're gonna bring in the first biggest positive of the game, the music! Now, developers pulled in quite the roster for the game. Having two fathers as the songwriters for the whole game and pulling in vocalists from different bands. Some of them I knew, like the Lamb of God and of course the System of the Down, but other ones I never really heard and after listening to them just because of this game, I became a complete fan, just absolute fan. I love their work and fantastic to see such a repertoire overall. Music is genuinely really, really good. Not your mainstream bullshit of a thing. It genuinely is creative, fun and entertaining music as metal tends to be quite often. Sure, metal is not for everyone, but I gotta honestly ask what the fuck is wrong with you at that point. But regardless, maybe this game will convince you and convert you to the metal scene. The thing is, yes, we all look really, really angry or really unapproachable, but goddammit, as the caricature tends to go, we're all kind inside and the metal scene in general, everyone in the community tends to be quite welcoming. So, come join us! Enjoy the fun slaughter! Honestly, come to think of it, I start to think that developers just simply pulled, or rather made the game, just to pull in those bands themselves. Because, hey, we're fans, we want, you know, kind of work with you, now what could we do? Oh, make a fucking good game! Let's do it! Now, it's time to also talk about the visuals, of course, and here comes the obvious Comparison. Doom Eternal. The game literally, without the names and things on the screen, literally could be confused for Doom. Uh, that is both a good thing and kind of a questionable thing if you're not into uh, homage, if you will. But regardless, 
level design is fantastic. Boy, it's fantastic. Like, really, really pretty. And it's running on Unity of all fucking things. Mmm, there are problems with movement, I can tell you that already, but... Again, it's a smaller budget game, so again, comparing to Doom is like basically comparing the Mega Ultra truck with basically your bargain basement, but well-built, couch-built, you know, car. Now, obviously, the visuals are inspired by Doom Eternal and Doom especially as well. It's fantastic to see. I don't mind it at all. In fact, I celebrate it because Doom was fantastic. It brought in the wonderful music. And, of course, it brought in the wonderful gameplay. And just because somebody wants to try and emulate it, honestly, they succeeded if that was their plan. And that is not a bad thing at all. Now, as for the story, well, let's see. As I said previously, it's a bit of a cringe, if you will, and the presentation is also not the best one. The levels aren't really connected that well together. The, the cutscenes are... Very, very budget, if you will. Honestly speaking, uh, they could have easily done a source filmmaker version of it and just paid some uh, uh, freelancer to make them, but I guess li licensing would be a problem. But regardless, uh, just a bit more effort in that side would have been nice. And generally speaking, the story, all I can say is forgettable, but yeah, I, mean, I mean, fine. It's fine and suitable all you're there for anyways is the gameplay and frankly speaking that's all you should care for though if you're into the story well there comes the other uh, sort of a negative i guess i have to say that is it's ending in basically a cliffhanger for immediate next game as if they are waiting like doom 2016 also did so yeah, it's basically sequel baiting, and I never liked that. But regardless, let's see if they can push out another game, and if they do, oh, it's gonna be probably better, and I really want to see another game like this, of course. Now, what is in the story in general? Well, you're the titular uh, unknown. You've lost your voice and can't sing, and you're basically going after the, uh, the arch devil, the, the, the big devil, if you will, for your voice who's stolen it. And uh, along with it, you kill bosses and get it back, but though you don't get any new powers from it, so I don't know why they bothered with it. But regardless, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, it's just simply some sort of a narrative to put together the <laughs> levels, if you will, and that's all it is. Ah, the gameplay time. Well, and as I said previously, it takes quite a bit of inspiration from Doom Eternal. And indeed, the glory kills are there, the dashing, the slashing, the killing, and so on and so forth is there. So overall, I would say it's basically like Doom 2016, where they put in really good mechanics, really fun gameplay, but it's not quite the level of... Uh, uh, gameplay interaction with all your arsenal or all your skills. You can literally just play the game with one weapon, uh, which in 2016 I did quite a bit, and just be okay with it. And uh, actually do pretty well with it. However, in Eternal you had to switch and you had to use specific weapons for specific enemies and target them first, otherwise you get killed quickly. And that's not quite here, though there are some examples. You can sort of postpone killing some of them, and yes, it will bite you in the ass if you don't deal with them quickly enough. But anyways, the other part of the gameplay comes from bullets per minute, or at least similar to it. I'm not exactly sure where they got the inspiration to do this sort of a gameplay with shooting on time and not, but bullets per minute is very, very similar and constantly will be compared to it, so we might as well do it today here. The difference between bullets per minute and Hellsinger is that in Hellsinger, actually, it's casual friendly, or rather more casual friendly, with better music, of course. But the thing is, you can shoot without the beats, and that's kind of the uh, a casual friendly approach, where if you're not used to that sort of a gameplay, where you're genuinely locked in shooting on the beat, like in bullets per minute,
Well, in Hellsinger, you can continue shooting and slashing, but reduced damage. And yeah, that works for those that perhaps haven't been familiar with this type of a gameplay. Because, hell, it took me quite some time to get into Bullets Per Minute myself, to just get those first couple shots out in time. But in Hellsinger, you can just play it as a normal game and still do okay. Of course, if you manage to hit on beat, ah, well, now then you're learning, you're advancing, and that in time you will. Which brings us to the general, wonderful, intensifying gameplay. The better you are doing, the better music becomes, and it just gels well so together. I love it. But yeah, if I had to choose which I would prefer for the gameplay side, well, it would be definitely Bullets Per Minute. First of all, there's more to do in Bullets Per Minute. I've been playing it for a long time. However, with Hellsinger, once you're done with the main story and gotten all the extra sigils or the challenge rooms, you know, the torments, uh, well, what else is there but to keep getting better score and well, even with the highest difficulty, I finished the game in like 10 hours or so. So, yeah, there's not that much of a replayability, though the music is fantastic. And for that alone, I again, it's good enough. Again, I would much rather prefer the snappy animations, which are another problem for Hellsinger in comparison to Bullets Per Minute. Bullet Per Minute, you got really snappy, actually telling animations, which work really well together with the style of the gameplay, you know, the beat system. In Hellsinger, animations tend to lag behind or don't really feel snappy quite as much, and that kind of hinders you getting into the rhythm, especially with the sword. Now, it might also sound like I'm recommending Bullets Per Minute instead of Hellsinger, and that's not the case. Both are fantastic games, really, really good. Not great, but really good. And both should be picked up and played, enjoyed together, because they are fucking good. As it often goes in gaming, there should be room for more than just one game that rules them all. No! This is fantastic that we have multiple games like this, and both are really good. So in the end, where the hell did the outsiders, these developers, come from? Well, as it happens, Stockholm, what a surprise, Nordics once more are up for the heavy music, and boy, don't you love them? I mean, seriously, it's wonderful to see my Nordic uh, brothers and sisters actually making something amazing that actually trumps so many AAA games. Speaking of that, the price for the game is 30 bucks on the release, and as I said previously, there's not a lot of the game inside of it. A lot of people have said, hey, well, yeah, it's fun and so on and so forth, but yeah, for 30 bucks, the, it, uh, where's the value really? And yeah, if you're not heavy into metal scene, like yours truly or many others, right? Yeah, yeah, gameplay is really good, but the uh, value depends on you. Now, for me, I, hell, I will take an hour's gameplay and pay 30, 60 bucks even for it if it's really good and thought-provoking or just fun overall. And this is so much more than that. To me, bullets per minute, 20 buck game or Hellsinger, 30 buck game, they, the value doesn't matter for or the price specifically. It doesn't matter to me. Hell, they're really worth far more. The fact is, Hellsinger has the audio library in the game as well, in the codex. Music alone would be worth at least half of the game's price, and to just simply have a wonderful, actually challenging gameplay that is unique, it's fantastic to have! So yeah, I would say definitely get the game and rock on!
So yeah, overall the game is really good. Not great, again, my value system is quite strict if you will, but this truly goes into the realm of really good. Something that's not quite great, but so close. Oh, I'm so happy that this thing is out. It just is wonderful to see good fucking games, again, from smaller developers coming out in recent times. So rock on, outsiders, you fucking rule! And I love you for it. Thank you.